I've been approached a few times recently about how did we do our business in the Philippines? How did we set up a call center? Um, I know a lot of people are looking at working remotely, uh, looking at set up a business in the country, looking at opportunities in the Philippines. So this video will actually go through what we did. While working out in the Middle East, my work had run over um, by a period of time. So with our extra budget, we actually decided that we would build an office back home at our place in Cebu. Um, this apartment on the well on the right hand side is our actual apartment we live in and just past that white gate is where we extended the building we actually welded the gate to the end of the uh, handrail to stop the kids getting in there while there's construction work going on as you can see it's not a big building it's about 20 foot long um, and it's probably about four four to six foot wider than a shipping container but this was our original base um, for the call center and at the time we weren't sure what we were going to do with it but we we're going to have a good crack at starting our own business as you can see we're just enjoying our christmas 2012 at our what would be our call center office um, the thing was another project came up for Qatar shortly afterwards which was basically gave us the funding to start the business um, and progress it from a uh, idea into something that at the time I had very little knowledge of um, purely because I'm not from the call center industry um, was that a good or a bad thing I would say it's a good thing because my technology uh, background is a lot more advanced than most people have in a call center. So where did we get our first PCs from? Um, the fact was we already had them from our old internet cafe. Um, they weren't great machines, they were Korean uh, cheapo stuff which had seen better days but there's enough to get us started and one thing people forget about call centers they don't need expensive equipment you need good servers but your actual uh, PCs could be pretty much obsolete anywhere else purely because they're only used as a um, telephone it's a bit like people buying a expensive PC to use Skype what is the point the next natural progression was to start hiring some people in. Um, I originally had two people start that were basically doing data entry and processing for me. And we then started looking at the call center because everybody at the time with the buzzword was call center. Um, and getting the data processing stuff was a lot harder um, because obviously it's not dialect specific what I mean is where Indians Pakistanis etc have a problem with pronunciation of the English language uh, which often irates customers um, the opportunity with the Philippines is they don't have that issue um, so that's what we did we began with three people um, it went up to six, then it went down to four, then it went up to three. <laughs> you know, it was going up and down all the time. Um, one of the key problems we had initially was getting the right staff. Uh, because we we're in a um, residential type area and not in the IT hub, people were a bit worried about it being a scam or not a real job, etc. Even though we everybody got paid weekly etc there was no you have to wait to the end of the month or any of that stuff because I was well aware a lot of people live hand to mouth as such I adapt the business to suit so it went up and down up and down until we originally uh, initially um, sorry until we eventually um, started to get some good agents come through because what you start having is you'll have one good agent sat between two new agents so what happens is they listen to the other agent they talk to each other and they start learning off the, that person and developing as they all start developing 
the profit margin goes up because your conversion ratio is increasing on a weekly basis. Now, doesn't sound a lot, does it? You know, but it, a lot of companies don't work this way. Some of these people had no way of getting into a call center. Um, they didn't have the skill set for it. They hadn't been trained. Nobody wanted to train them. But now they had an opportunity to sit there as long as they want. Everyone had a basic pay, and then everything's commissioned on top of that. So um, you got some agents earning as much as 15, 20,000 pesos a week. Other ones hitting bare minimum, but at the same time, every week they're there, they're progressing. Um, to the point, I remember a couple of our trainees come in, um, and they initially struggled but within two weeks they progressed into being hardcore telesales agents and they also um, now work at other call centers because the fact is everybody that was a BPO 24 hour their skill sets had improved to the point they could work anywhere um, because we basically taught people to sell right? So what made our call center different? Well, the first thing is we don't work on hours. I hate working on hours, I'll be honest with you myself, purely because I know how much stuff I can do in a specific time period and it could be as much as four times as much as the average other person. So time scales to me are based on performance. So the first thing for me was if you hit your quota, you could go to sleep, go home, go for a beer. I couldn't care less. And you set a basic quota of, at the beginning, three a week, and then the top salespeople were doing three to 11 uh, sales a day. Um, but it's all to do with the environment. They know they have to hit quota. I don't have to go around ringing a bell saying, come on, you haven't sold for 10 minutes, all this sort of stuff which goes on in other call centers. There's no need for it. It doesn't, doesn't motivate people at all. Um, the other thing is, we have like these breakouts of food and stuff. If we're having a good day, I'll go and buy everybody McDonald's. If we're having a bad day, at the end of the shift, we'll open some brandy and beers and just sit down and have a chat and say, well, what do you think's going wrong? And we'll analyze what's right and what's wrong in the sales. We make people part of the solution instead of making them part of a problem. That way, everybody pulls in the right direction. Now, the other side of this being is we also had, we were very lucky another call center had burned down, <laughs> um, two quality controllers, um, Eileen and Cheryl, had basically their job at the other call center had to be to listen up to I think it was about 300 calls a day analyzing what the sales agents were doing for improving their sales pitch etc etc making sure they're not bre breaching any laws um, so they came and worked for us um, because we're nearby which is one of the other reasons we chose to go and mingle in Ilia because we don't have that competing edge in the IT park where they're poaching off each other you know one offer 12,000 pesos, next one offers 15, and then they go backwards and forwards to get better benefits, etc. We don't bother with that. People come to us because we're nearby. If you, play, if you perform well, you get paid well. It's as simple as that. It, it can't get any more um, simple than that. It's something everybody understands, everybody can work with, and as such, everybody's happy. So how well did it work? Well. We started off with a small office, which maxed out at 16 people. We then rented a house opposite our building um, and put another 10 units in the ground floor there. And within two weeks, we'd filled that. We then used the upper floor for another 10 units. And basically, we were struggling for space. Um, but we went from three people to eventually 45. As the business progressed, we started to reinvest. As you can see, the guys have got new uniforms. Um, we had our outing days, which you may have seen in the other videos. We 
invested in training we invested in trying to develop guys in other ways um, for example SEO blog writing um, we invested in the PCs we started replacing all the older equipment with new ones but kept the old ones as emergency uh, crash machines so that if your PC failed could literally just bring one of the old machines and swap them straight over and you'll be back live in less than five minutes so the whole thing was evolving um, and the next stage was we needed more space which is when we purchased the next building and began renovating that 